In this class we model a small flow line, a system that consists of a machine followed by a queue, which is followed by another machine, another queue, and so on. In a sequence. Parts arrive, wait in the queue in front of the first machine if the resource is not available. Then, parts move to the second stage, and so on until the last stage. In this class we will introduce the following instructions. Assign, route and station from the blocks library. Expressions, stations and entities from the elements library. We start with the instruction stations. Stations are virtual locations in the simulation models where entities can be routed and processed. Drag and drop the instruction that you find in the elements library. Click it. Then, click on add an element. In the new window, add the number and the name of the station you want to add. Remind that both are ID, so you cannot define the same numbers or the same names for different stations. In this flow line we have three stations. We'll call these stations S1, S2, and S3. We don't need to fill the rest of the fields in this example. Thus, we write number 1, and S1 for the first station. And we click on OK. Then, we add the other two stations in the same way. After stations, we define the resources that we want to model. These resources are the turning machine, the milling machine, and the inspection machine. Drag and drop the instruction resources from the element library. Open it. And add the resources. We call the first resource turning, and we assign the ID number 1. This resource has a capacity of 1 unit. The rest of the fields, like costs and failures, are not important in this exercise and we don't use them. Define similarly the other two resources of the system, milling and inspection. And finally confirm the operation. In the system we want to model, each machine has an input queue. We now define these buffers by adding elements in the queue's instruction. Drag and drop the instruction in the model, and open it. Click on Add, and define the first queue by adding the number and the name. We first insert the queue in front of the turning machine, then the one in front of the milling machine. Finally, the queue in the inspection stage. The number is 1. The name is queue turning. Confirm clicking on OK. At the same way, define the queue milling and the queue inspection. After having defined the main components, we begin to build the logic of the simulation model. We start with modeling the arrival of parts. This is done using the instruction create that you find in the blocks library. Since we have two different part types we add two creates. We can also add a text to distinguish better among the two part types. For part type A, we create batches of one entity every TIA one time units. This inter-arrival time will be defined in the instruction expressions. You find the instruction expressions in the elements library. Drag and drop the instruction in the model. Open it. Here you can define an expression that contains simple numbers, mathematical formulas, and stochastic distribution. As usual, the field's number and name are the idea of the expressions. 1D and 2D array index are used if you want to define an array of expressions. In the field expression value, you introduce the expression. We introduce the inter-arrival time of part type A. The number is 1. The name is T01. And the expression is expo of 5, which means that the times are generated from the exponential distribution with mean equal to 5. Confirm with OK. Now. Add the expression for the inter-arrival time of part type B. 
It is an exponential distribution with mean 8. Confirm with OK. Confirm again. We still have to add the interarrival time for part type B. The name just used in the expression is T2. A2. A2. The processing time at the turning machine is different for part type A and part type B. As a consequence, we must distinguish in the simulation model between an entity representing a part type A and an entity modeling a part type B. To do this, we introduce the instruction entities. This command helps us to define different types of entities by assigning an ID, and name, and also a picture if you need an animation of the simulation. Drag and drop the instruction entities that you find in the elements library. Open it. Insert the numb, and the name of the entity type. In our case, the number is 1. The entity type is type A. We don't specify any picture for this type of entities. Confirm with OK. Add the second part type. The number is 2. The name is type B. Confirm your definition of entities and move to the logic of the model, of the model. Open the two create blocks, and specify the entity that will be generated. You do by selecting from the entity type command in the create interface. Let's change the name of part types. The text says A and B, not 1 and 2. After having created the entities, we send them to the first station, which is the turning station. We have already defined this station in the element stations. We do this with the new instruction root. Root is used to send entities to stations. Each routing might take a routing time. You find the instruction root in the blocks library. Drag and drop this instruction. Open it. The root interface is asking two fields. The first one is the duration to send the entity to the station. The second field is the station where the entity is routed. For the entities just created, we select the turning station, which is S1. The routing time is zero. Finally, confirm the root command. The first part of the model is finished. Let's define the details of each station.